Sources in DR Congo have revealed that the national troops clash with M23 rebels around a strategic highway in the eastern part of the country on Thursday following a recent flare up between the two sides. The clashes has led to thousands of families to flee their home for safety, leading to humanitarian crisis in some of the camps. I've fled the fighting in Yasisi. We had a lot of gunshots and we saw the M23 fighters who came to attack us. That's why we are here in Kanyaruchinya. We have peace in Ethiopia thanks to the African Union. But the African Union, which we criticize a lot, must make sure that it does that even in DRC, which is about to engage in war with Rwanda. We don't want the people of DRC to fight with the people of Rwanda. The Africans must stop using weapons against each other, but start negotiating through peaceful means. The spokesperson of the M23 rebels says the latest attack by the army is a clear indication that the DRC government is not interested in dialogue. The government hasn't responded to the accusation yet. The M23 rebel group is composed of ethnic Tutsis who've been living in North Kivu province. For minerals in the Congo, more than 7 million Congolese since 1996 to date have been killed by proxy militias. Hundreds of thousands of women have been raped in the Congo, in, all over or around in, in, to the, in, the, in the North and Southern Kivu provinces. Only two provinces. And in two, seven million have been killed. Hundreds of thousands of women have been raped. Many young girls have been raped on our watch. And we never said any single word to denounce that. And who is doing that? Militias, the proxy armies, armed by two governments. By the Rwandan government, by the Ugandan government. First of all, at the beginning, it used to be called immediately after killing President Kabila. It was called RCD Goma. And then when the world discovered who was behind RCD Goma, Rwanda and Uganda, they became, now they changed the tactics, the name. They became CNDP. And in 2008, when the international community discovered that it was a war of occupation, a war about blood minerals. They now kind of changed the name. This is when the UN report about the stolen minerals of the Congo. This report came on October, no, on December 10th, 2008. Then immediately they changed the name. They tried to trick the Congolese government. And the Congolese government integrated the then the rebels. And a few years later, they, this in 2012, they just striked, left the Congolese army and formed now with the aid of Rwanda, with the aid of Uganda once again. They created what is today called M23 because it was created on March 23rd. 2012 and it was called under that date when it was created. Democratic Republic of Congo's army says they're among more than 3,000 people who've responded to a call for recruits. I am here because we are suffering too much. My family, my sisters, they have suffered a lot from war. Some of them were raped. So we're here because from now on I need to defend myself. Everyone here says they're ready to fight M23, widely seen to be a proxy of neighbouring Rwanda, although Rwanda denies it. 26 years ago, Rwanda and Uganda invaded Congo. Ever since, there have been repeated accusations of meddling and a presence of foreign forces for most of that time, including sometimes from those countries as well as UN peacekeepers.
Moi, ce que je veux dire. The M23, for the record, was defeated five years ago mm. by Sadak forces led by Tanzania, South Africa, and Marawi. Mm. And they were almost captured. At the, at the time when they were almost captured, then they crossed over to Kampara. Yes. And Kampara gave them shelter. They were hosted in Isinjuro, in a refugee camp in Isinjuro, for five years. Mm -hmm. The UN Security Council did debate the M23 conflict then, and reports were adduced, which are online on the UN website, with evidence as to was supporting yep. M23. By then it was both Rwanda and Uganda. Mm. How M23 now escaped from a refugee camp to go back to Eastern DRC is a question that people should interest themselves Absolutely. in. Yeah. So and whether then the presence of UPDF, because I saw the protests yes. of, uh, of, of the Congolese people saying uh, UPDF should be kicked out of, of DRC. So the question should be then, how did M23 escape from a refugee camp in Uganda? And what happened to the commitment that Uganda had given the UN that they will disarm and, and make sure these guys do not destabilize the RSC again mm. uh, as a host nation? Mm. How do we explain that? Mm. Then how do we then distinguish the role of UPDF in the RSC to be purely about flashing out the DF and has nothing to do with M23? We are about to lose more lives in the war between TRC and Rwanda. And the African Union must intervene immediately now, as in yesterday, because black life matters. They shouldn't wait for millions to die, like it happened in Ethiopia. There's been armed conflict in Eastern Congo ever since Rwanda and Uganda invaded in the 1990s. Both countries have been accused of looting minerals and meddling ever since. Two children were killed and buried nearby. One of them was Sifa Ninera's seven-year-old son, Isaac. She says he was playing with friends when he was blown to pieces. We are really tired. We demand more protection so that our children may live in peace now. When there's a cracking sound, the children panic and have to flee. The child who has died will not come back, but those who remain must be protected. It's the kind One of the richest countries on the planet is the Congo. The Belgium and the U.S. government, it was Dwight Eisenhower, got with the National Security uh, Office, and they said that this man needs to be eliminated, and they passed information to the rebel forces in the Congo, and they found Patrice Lumumba, and they assassinated him. And then a gentleman by the name of Babutu became, became to power. And the U.S. gave him over $300 million to oppress his own people, to make sure gold and silver and coltan would continue to flow to Europe and the United States and Australia. And then in 1997, when Mobutu died of cancer, uh, there was another person who came to power by the name of Kabila. And Kabila then eventually died, but a civil war ensued. And in order to finance the civil war, because cell phones were exploding at that time, they would mine coal tan. It didn't seem like much, but in order to, this cell phone you had, the cell phone I had, it has coal tan in it. In order to get that coal tan, they would kidnap children to mine the coal tan in the Congo. In the last 10 years or so, 5.4 million children have been murdered in the Congo. 5.4 million people, I'm sorry, have been murdered in the Congo. Over 50, almost 50% 50 of them, children. That every time you purchase your cell phone, you finance the oppression of a child of a country. People in the city of Goma are angry at President Paul Kagame of neighboring Rwanda. They say they're tired of Rwandan military aggression in Democratic Republic of Congo. 
We are going into Rwanda so they can kill us, as they are doing with the M23 rebels, because we are tired of this ongoing situation in our country. Now, as I said, any African who claims to be a Pan-Africanist must be ashamed at looking the other way when millions of our people in Congo, who have been massively raped and exploited over the last generations, you know, continue to do so, and they suffer simply because of their resources. Congo is not a threat to Uganda, has never been. Congo is not a threat to Rwanda, has never been. Congo has never been a threat to any other major country. Granted, people have been in Congo who have been threats to the others. Let me, let me explain it this way. In World War II, 400,000 people died. In the Civil War, 500,000 people. 5.4 million people. Larger than any other conflict, any other war since World War II, more people have died in the Congo than any other conflict in the last 40 years combined. But no one has heard a thing because it's happening in Africa. Kagame is actually one of Africa's <coughs> biggest problems because Congo is the biggest dissettlement of Africa that causes Africa never to unite. And Kagame is the reason why we've got the Congolese struggle. The, DR the DRC, my, my basic understanding is that it's, it's the wealthiest country in Africa, on the continent on the con from in a the world perspective. In the world, yeah. It's the wealthiest country in the world from a natural resources perspective. 100%. And you're saying well, Paul Kagame has a part to play in that. Yeah, uh, people don't understand that we always hear about the Rwandan genocide. Mm. The Rwandan genocide was started by Paul Kagame. And he started the Rwandan genocide because he wanted to take power by force in a country that would have never elected him into power because he came from the minority Tutsis who used to be supported by the colonizer and used to be the administrators on behalf of the colonizer. So for Paul Kagame to come back as a Tutsi to come and take power in Rwanda, mm -hmm. he needed to do something. And what he did is he started the genocide. He started the genocide by bringing down a plane that had two presidents, Hutu presidents, the Burundian president and the Rwandan president. Paul Kagame and his uh, RFP forces shot down the plane when it was landing back in Rwanda from actually an, a, an AU meeting. Mm -hmm. And when that plane came down, then it inflamed the Hutu people who knew that they were uh, uh, RFP fighters who were trying to take war, uh, 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 power by force. Mm -hmm. And so they began to fight against Tutsi people who they felt wanted to come and take over power. While they were doing that, Paul Kagame himself sent his forces to murder his own Tutsi people on a whole scale level to make it look like a genocide so that he could then have his forces come into Rwanda and take over power militarily under the guise of stopping a genocide against Tutsis. These are all things that are factual. Well, well documented. Jeez. It is actually something that the International Court of Justice wanted to persecute him for. Mm. And then the Americans covered up for him and the French covered up for him so that it wouldn't come out. But poor Kagame came into power by murdering his own people. Then when he did that, he then took Laurent Kabila, who was now living in Rwanda, mm. to go and take over power from Babu to Seko. These are the leaders in the DRC. This was in the DRC. And the arrangement that he had with Mabutu is once you're in power, you need to bring some of my own people mm. into your system. And the reason why he wanted to bring his own people into the system is that the Tutsis see themselves as a superior people to Bantus. And so they want to reinstitute something called the Mapororo Tutsi Empire that is going to rule over Central Africa and the Great Lakes. Because if you look where they came from in, in, in Uganda, Museveni is Tutsi. And he is the one who trained together with people like Paul Kagame in Tanzania together with our liberation fighters. Mm. And when they came from those liberation camps, then Museveni went and took power from Obote. And then he put people like Kagame and, other, and, and, the, and, and the Hutus and the Tutsis into his army and intelligence. They then started murdering non-Tutsis non who wanted power mm. in, 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 in Uganda because they were majorities. And that's how um, um, Museveni becomes the president of Uganda as a Tutsi. And then he begins to assist Kagame together with the Europeans, the Americans, 
to then create a force that is going to take power in, 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 in Rwanda. <coughs> and then they must take power in Rwanda, instill a Tutsi in Burundi, and instill a Tutsi in Congo. So when they then succeeded in getting Mabu, uh, um, 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 uh, uh, um, what do you call him, Kabila into power, Kabila refused to put Tutsis into his government. Mm. And when he refused, then Kagame and Museveni then sent their armies and rebels into Congo with an intention to remove uh, um, Kabila. Kabila. Every day, you must remember your first love, the love you have for your country. And betrayal will not find a place in your thoughts. Do you hear? This love must motivate you to defend the country and even spill your own blood. In Goma, precisely in northern Kivu, young men and women attend recruitment drives in the hope of getting the chance to be trained at the military academy and defend their country. We are attacked and continue to be attacked every day. I cannot stand by and watch. Today I'm happy to join the army and I want to fight against the Rwandans. They must not invade our country anymore. A year ago, the group reemerged after a peace deal saying the government had failed to live up to its decade-long promises. I'm joining the army because my country is suffering a lot. We can't sleep peacefully anymore, and that makes me very angry.